So, Riemann zeta function. What do you think of when you hear the Riemann zeta function? No? Pi of x. <laughs> Pi of x. Um, the millennium problem about the zeros of the Riemann zeta function. We saw that on our homework, um, the first part of our homework. <laughs> uh, or uh, pretty pictures, which is what Hansen was trying to pull up earlier. But today I will talk about more formally the Riemann zeta function. So, Riemann zeta function, find zeta of s, for s is complex numbers, where the real part of s is greater than or equal to one. This is very important here, because if you don't have this, you're gonna have this nonsense where people say the sum of all natural numbers is negative one twelve. Don't get me started on that. Anyways, this is equal to the summation as n equals one to infinity, of one over n to the s. Okay? So before we get into this beautiful proof of the infinitude of the primes using this function, I am going to define, well, I'm going to prove an even more beautiful proof, dare I say, or this product formula. Which if I recall, we assumed on our homework, which is somewhat of a crime. But <laughs> this says that the product of all primes of one over one minus one of p to the s is equal to zeta of s, which again is the sum that we have here. Okay. So Let's prove this. We know that zeta of s, to write it all out, it is 1 plus 1 over 2 to the s plus 1 over 3 to the s plus 1 over 4 to the s, etc. Now, what if we multiply this equation here by 1 half to the s? Right? As you may notice, these are all fractions with factors, not powers, of two in the denominator to the power of s, right? Now, what should we do with these two equations? We should subtract them. Because that is how we get this beautiful cancellation. Oh, no, I didn't do it. Okay. I didn't do it. <laughs> of these two. <laughs> and, like I said, all factors also. All factors of okay, so, yeah. Thus, we have zeta of s minus one half zeta, zeta of s equals one plus one third to the s plus one fifth to the s Essentially, all odd powers and denominators to the power of s, of course. Now, as you may expect, I'm going to rewrite this. And we recognize patterns quite well. What do you think I'm going to do? I am going to multiply this equation by one third to the s. And while I'm doing that, I'm also going to factor out zeta to the s here. So we have one minus one half to the s times zeta of s, right? So this is equal to one third to the s plus one ninth to the s plus one fifteenth to the s, et cetera. These are all factors of three, which are also odd because of what we did earlier. So as you may recognize, these would cancel. 
And this will cancel with something here. Same thing. Now, we're doing some quick factoring here. We have one of these and one third to the S of D. So I'm going to factor this out really quick. One minus one third to the S, one minus one third to the S times one minus one half to the S times zeta S equals one plus one fifth to the S plus one seventh to the S. And this also keeps going for things that are not factors of two, four, three. So what do we recognize about this besides the one here? Five is prime, seven is prime. We also have things like perhaps, Eleven. Yeah, 11. 11, but also factors of these numbers that we have here still, some of them. So <clears throat> by this logic and the fact that this converges here, right? This is going to converge because like I said, the real part of S is greater than or equal to one. Therefore, this is just going to get smaller and smaller after the one. So we can write, Uh, this product. So this is an infinite. No, we don't know it's infinite. That's what we're trying to prove. This product over one. No, I'm getting ahead of myself. One over we have one minus one over three to the s. One minus one half to the s. And like we have one minus one over five to the s, etc. Times zeta of s equals one. Okay. So last step, divide everything that's not zeta here on the left-hand side. So zeta of s equals one over this product. Which can be rewritten as, you may have guessed, this product over all primes of one over one minus one over P to the S. So that is the beauty of this proof. I just want to say that this process is called sieving and this specifically is called the sieve of Eratosthenes. Er 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 I read I've it. I've never heard anybody pronounce that in a, with conviction. So it's a nice word. Er okay. So, now we're going to get to the gem of this discussion, the infinitude of the primes. But before we do that, who remembers geometric series? Right, I think that was also on our homework. We had to use that. What does the geometric series converse, converge to for a small ratio r, that is an r that is an has absolute value less than one, strictly. Eight eight yes. Exactly. So the high school teachers got yeah. part of it. You have the sum as n equals one to infinity of alpha times r to the n minus one equals alpha, that's an alpha, over one minus r. And again, this is for absolute value of r less than one strictly. So we're going to use this in our proof, obviously. So <clears throat> we are going to substitute alpha and for one and r for one over p. Why can't we do this? Because p is not one. Because one is not prime and always positive and basically always less than one. It will converge to zero as P gets larger. So now we have the summation as n equals one to infinity of one over P to n minus one equals one over one minus one over P. Doesn't that look quite familiar from the thing that I just erased? 
<laughs> well, it does when s equals one. And we had a product here. So let's take a product. Let's do one minus one over one half to the to the n minus one. The n. Yes. No. Yes. No. To the n minus one times one over one minus one over three to the n minus one. Now, what is this? We could just plug, oh, I was wrong. Yeah. Plug this in here. So instead of multiplying these two out, which would be quite easy, uh, we're going to do it the hard way. And multiply <laughs> this out. We'll plug this in and then multiply them. So we have this is all, or is a two denominator, one plus one and a half plus one fourth plus one eighth. Keep in mind these are strictly powers now, not factors from earlier. And that keeps going times one plus one third plus one ninth. And that also keeps going. What is this equal to? Let's put it in here. Just a little bit of uh, you know infinite distributing, we get one plus one half plus one third plus one fourth plus one sixth. And this will also keep going. Four powers of two, powers of three, and combinations of those two strictly. So what are we missing here? We skipped over five. We're not going to have one over seven. We're not going to have one over 11. Of course not. We are missing primes that we would have otherwise included here. Right? And also other composite numbers. So how do we fix that? We take this product over all of our primes. So we have product over p of one over one minus one over p. And I'm plugging in s equals one here. So we got one equals the sum as n equals one to infinity of one over n. What is one over n? The harmonic series, series yes. And it is not its alternating counterpart. So what does it do? It diverges. What would P do if P was finite? If it was finite, it would converge. However, since it's equal to something that diverges, this must also diverge. Therefore, there are infinitely many primes. <laughs>